What up, what up, what up? Real Fans Podcast, back at it again. We're in late February. It's post-NFL season, post-Super Bowl. But I'm here. I'm your boy Gabe. I'm, I guess, the one hosting. That's Julian over here to my whatever direction this is. Julian, say what's up. Gabe, Gabe what did you want to say before we started the show? Because he was about, like, freaking out on the countdown. Just say it. What no, you- I, I, I'm just, listen, sometimes I kept coming <laughs> here. I'm like, okay, how I'm going to enter, how I'm going to enter. Gabe gets nervous sometimes. Like, we yeah. have time about 200. I'm like, five, four. Gabe's like, what do we do? I got to do it in my brain. Whatever. That's JoJo. Say what's up, JoJo. Here. We're back at it. The boys are back in the building. Back at it again. Post football season. I guess the biggest thing, I guess, this this is the reason why we had to have this podcast. Emergency podcast. We have to talk about this video of Cam Emergency. Newton. <laughs> Cam Emergency Newton. Uh, uh, Julian, Julian said he wanted to look at this video live and react to it live. So here's a preface of it from what I hear. Basically, Cam Newton obviously retired. Uh, I think he started his own podcast. You know, he recently got in beef with like Stephen A. And like, you know, uh, what was his big thing, JoJo? It was like a game changer or game manager. Game manager and that was game his... changer. However, oh, Brock he Purdy. It. Yeah, yeah. His... Brock Purdy, multiple quarterbacks, is providing feedback on them. And there's a mixed review. People saying he's a hater. He's hating from the outside, can't get in. However, he has yeah. the experience. He's played in the yeah. NFL. I mean, he's made it to a Super Bowl. So. I think his opinion somewhat matters on certain topics. Yeah, I think he's still relative because, you know, a lot of people are saying he's a hater because he still wants to play, play in the league. Obviously, the head, how long has it been out? It's been out like two years, a year or two? He, you know. I think two. I think two because I don't um, think he played last his, year. His last stint was with, was that Mac Jones? Patriots? Rookie year? Yeah. Patriots, two years yeah. ago? Yeah, yeah, yeah this, I don't think he got a – I don't – Yeah, I don't think he got anything after the Patriots. I, I don't no. – I want to say. Yeah, so I'll, I'll look that up. We'll fact check the uh, stats. But obviously, he's been, rele- you know, that's he's trying to get into the media game. That was his most recent relevant addition right. to the conversation of sports. Um, but I guess over the weekend, uh, I guess he lives in Atlanta. There, as apparently, there's like an Atlanta football league. It's like 7-on-7. Seven seven. These are like 14- and 15-year-olds. Uh, and apparently, he got in a fight with some kind of crude. Uh, we're not playing the video, right, Julian? I want to get make no, sure we're not no. getting DCA. Okay, I'm gonna I'm, I'm yeah. put it on now. Let me well, see this. We're, we're, so, we're not trying to get flagged yeah. and reported. Okay, so Julian, the money as Julian watches the video, he's going. He wants to react to it live for some reason. Uh, <laughs> just to fact check his last year. Actually, he, he retired. He played with Carolina, 2021. So he played. So the he Patriots. did finish with Carolina, right? He did play after. Yeah, I didn't know Carolina was before that. Yeah, I mean, his whole career has been Carolina. So 2020... Is Actually, no, yeah, I do Patriots. remember that. Now I think about it, yeah. And he played eight games uh, in 2021 with Carolina. He ended the season. Yeah, it was like an emergency. They brought him back. He actually did, like, kind of all right that first, like, game, I think. Yeah, so that, that, I that's remember a quick this fact now. check. So, Julian, have you seen the video? Julian wants to react to it right, live. I just, of what's going on. I just, first of all, can you spot Cam Newton? Do you know where Cam Newton is? It is he is so easy to spot. <laughs> You just look for the fucking flying saucer on his head. <laughs> yeah, bro. Hey, you see that? <laughs> First like, of all, his hat didn't move. He like, pulled that shit to his hair. Like, what do you expect? Like, of course, the shit didn't fucking move. Bro, cutting up the top of his hat just to put his dress through. Jeez, yeah, you cannot miss that man. I'll tell you what, though, he handled that like a champ, bro. He he didn't get I mean, rocked. Or apparently, anything. allegedly, this video shows. I guess he got in a fight on some steps with two guys. A third guy throws a punch, and he's throwing these guys around, manhandling. Again, you can spot him from a mile away. Besides him being six foot eight, two hundred sixty pounds, the guy has the top hat. You know, he's known for his his Seven, his seventeen his, with the hat. I mean, the guy has a hat with a feather on it. I mean, and and the hat never fell off. So if you get your ass beat. I mean, I'm sorry. I'm not a you know. I'm not a referee, a judge. I'm not. I'm not uh, uh, bestowed with the powers by the state of Texas. But if you're fighting with a hat on and it never falls off, and you're fighting three guys, I think, I, I I think you won, won that fight. I think you won that fight. The one thing, <laughs> the the one thing with fight videos, context matters, dog. I need to know what's the context here. Like, okay, I, then that's I, why I try to give you context. So wrong. apparently, okay, he man. runs a team. Like I said, this is. Uh, uh, in Atlanta, this is like seven on seven. Yeah. It's like a seven on seven league. Fifteen year old kids. These are kids, like children. So I don't know. I can't tell you why they decided to punch uh, Cam Newton on that day. I can just tell you why he was there at that. So obviously he's retired, not playing the league. We don't know the back. Well, I don't know the background of yeah. it, but I can tell you the little history of Cam Newton being disrespected at these camps. Oh. 
with these teens. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah I, actually, I remember when. Bro, time. like, I feel like it was a buildup to this moment for whatever reason. Like, they, yo, they don't respect this guy. I don't I don't understand. Like, influential player, made it to NFL from the ground up. Crazy storyline. Um, you know, he goes to these camps. He puts in his time, his effort, his money, right, to develop these young players and to give them insight. And you can see in these videos, they're trying him. Oh, he never won a Super Bowl. He's this, he's that, he's that. I can't imagine personally getting invited to a camp where you have professional players and then you're literally just shit talking to them. I'm like, that's blatant disrespect. But he decides to continue to, to show up to these things. And obviously one thing led to another. And now he's in a full out fight with with a flying saucer on his head. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know who he got in a fight with, like he might have gotten a fight Bro with some adults. Like he gets Hopefully he didn't get a fight with kids. Thing. I mean, that'd be really bad if he got in a fight with kids. Hopefully it's just other adults. I know they talk a lot of cash shit in here, and Cam Newton, you know, he, he's not one to hold his tongue. Like, I, he, think, I think he finally fired back this time. He, yeah, yeah. Someone fired this on him. He From what I can see on the one-minute video, I can see it looks like Cam Newton got a job. I don't know what happened before. I don't know what happened after. Uh, obviously, they got if more than one. Also, my definition has always been if there's more than one person going after you, one, that's some bitch made shit, and two, it is jumping. Like, whether who started or not, it's like once another person hops in, it that's that's a jump at that point, like to me at least. Yeah, and uh, you know, Cam Newton, you know, is uh, not afraid. I guess he he, he wants to smoke. Uh, uh, if you remember uh, his past uh, engagements, uh, you know, there's a video of you know him smiling, <laughs> fighting Josh Norman uh, at a, uh, you know, Carolina Panthers camp. But uh, yeah, man, don't don't fight that. That guy is very large. Like the one thing is like, a he's big. Like this, this guy is like what six five six six, two hundred forty, two hundred fifty maybe pounds, and that guy's still in shape. I don't know if you saw a video like him training when he was trying to um, stay in the blue. Like this guy's ripped. This guy. Obviously, staying in shape. I think, you know, that's why people say he's a hater because he's staying in shape probably because he wants to get back in the league. Uh, I don't know if that's. I mean, yo, anything possible you this time. Paco, bro, you, you just got to be ready. Um, no. This guy came straight off the couch. I mean, um, I wonder, like, if the reason why, like, he always gets tried at these camps is because he's trying so hard to be one of them. And it's like, I instead of trying so. to be like an authoritative figure, like, I don't know. Like, like I haven't, obviously, I'm not fucking there, but like the videos I've seen, it seems like. He comes off in a way where, like, he's not Arrogant. trying to be an authoritative figure. Yeah, oh. it's just like he's, like, trying to be, like, one of them almost. Are you trying to be down? And I don't know if that pisses – yeah, I don't know if that just pisses people off or what. Like, you know, like, I when mean, people have coaches, like, there's certain coaches you just, like, don't fuck with. Or there's certain people – like, I don't know if he's just not giving off that level of respect to people that, that – um. I don't. I can't think of the word at the moment, but like I don't know. He's just not getting that certain vibe from people where it's like, all right, this is like a a guy, like authoritative figure. Like I don't know, and maybe he's just trying to be one of them, and yeah, then he's I like mean, talking listen, shit man, quick, and quick whatnot. That, That's just my bro, thought. Like, yo, first line, first sign of disrespect. Yo, you're getting kicked out. You're done. Go home. That's the thing. Anybody I think maybe he just let. Home? He's letting shit. He's letting shit fly and letting shit slide. And people keep on trying him. Yeah. Like. To go back like, and forth people watch people arguing. see these videos it's yeah people yeah. see these videos it's like oh cam newton can take it. he'll talk shit he'll talk shit and then things just escalate after the next one and the next one it's just like i don't know well i mean if you want to talk about yeah, eric necessarily blame him but go ahead gabe i mean yeah, i was gonna say like as well. like bro like why are you no no i'm not putting it all on him but i'm yeah, just saying yeah. like whatever I mean, all, all th this shit happens all the time to NFL players. It just happened to be on camera. Um, I'm going to speak to, like, you know, he does come off arrogant, I would say. Like, but when no, you're a but competitor. But this is always happening to Cam Newton, though. Yeah, like, I mean, like, this guy was MVP of the league, right? So, like, he, he has arrogance, but it's because he's played against other people. Like, he's played against larger men than him and people who were trying to decapitate him on the field. Um, and he's excelled at that. So, if he comes off arrogant, it's probably because you know he's played at the high level so the competitor to him obviously his arrogance is earned I guess. Oh, this is supposed to be like, a camp though too like you're not you know yeah. what i mean like it's supposed to be a camp where you're teaching kids like who don't have the opportunity to i mean this get shit a certain happens, type of training i mean so, um, fights and things like this happen all the time it just happens he be he happens to be a celebrity i generally like i'm not gonna say, I'm, I don't co-sign everything Cam Newton says about sports, but um, I think generally like like he's a likable dude. Like this, he doesn't really get in a lot mm -hmm. of trouble. Um, he was born in Atlanta, which is a surprise to me. I thought he was from like 
Alabama. No, that's something. why he went to yeah. Auburn. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he, uh, yeah. So he he's from from that area. He's from Atlanta. So it would make sense for him to be at home running a league or whatever. Um, yeah, I kind of maybe I kinda, it's the structure too, like the structure of the camps. Uh, this Maybe is not a camp. Like, this is like a like free flowing. That's what yeah. I'm saying. It's just like this free flowing thing, like pickup culture and shit gets like too crazy. Maybe it's not like a camp camp where you got like fucking rules and shit you gotta do. Or I mean, it's like a rec league, right? Out. It's like a travel, like travel baseball, is it? seven on seven. Like, yeah. Um, I see this all the time because they people do have camps, but those are like really like one off things, right? That happens on a weekend. Um, but this is like seems like a, a team that he's running. But I don't know. It's like it's just like the most sensational shit that happened this weekend. Uh, that I just wanted to point out. I want to see Julian's reaction Man, to. I, I want to. I want to see how these guys look after getting beat up by Cam, bro. So yeah, <laughs> just get thrown around. It's too short. Like I can't see what the fuck. Like I don't know. It's so short. Like I mean, he was just really dragging around. You sent me. Yeah, at yeah. least video sent me. It like starts off. They're already fighting. So I didn't he, even see yeah. like no dub or nothing. Cam was really. He, I don't see any Cam punches. I, I saw him get punched. Uh, but he was just dragging people around. He was holding one guy, one guy by the neck. One guy. You know what I mean? Dragging another guy to the floor. Uh, I don't know. The most sensational. I will shit say, ever. bro, that shit does bother me when you see like two people on one guy. Like, bro, like, why do you feel the need to hop in? Like, it's just such like bitch shit. Like, that bothers me so much. Like, let them fight, bro, dog. Like, why are you gonna sit there and hop like, in? That's someone five five trying to fight six seven Cam Newton, bro. They yeah. don't fight them, bro. <laughs> yeah, they <just> don't <laughs> fight them. <laughs> Like, I'm not gonna jump in for you if you started a fight. Like, no, that's your shit. That's your problem. You deal with it. You gonna get fucking rocked. You gonna get rocked. Like, I don't understand. Like, I don't know, man. I don't know. Unless they just want to be cool and be like, "Yo, I hit Cam Newton," or whatever. Yeah. But, anyways, uh, I just want to bring it up. Like I said, that was Gabe. Would you fight Cam Newton? Hell, the fuck no, <laughs> bro. I be watching. Yo, I watched fucking football. I'm like, damn, that dude's Gabe's too old, bro. And, and <laughs> The weird thing is, I know, like, when you watch sports, like, obviously, everybody looks small oh, to me. Man. I, I know that everybody's large, but even among large people, he looks large. Like, he looks bigger than everybody. The reason why he was so good at goal line is because he's fucking as big as a fucking lineman. Maybe not as wide as a lineman, but he's as big as strong as them. So, nah, like, he's pretty I don't pretty see why you want to, even among, like, strong people, which any, everybody in the NFL is strong people. Like, they fucking bench press 500 pounds. They can squat 1,000 pounds, whatever. I'm exaggerating, but you know what I'm saying. Like, everybody's strong. Everybody yeah. is capable. Everybody competes. And even among that, like, he's still a fucking gladiator. Like, he's still physically at the top. Why the fuck would you want to fight a guy like that? Like, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm five. I'm fucking barely 5'10". I'm like 5'9 and three quarters. Like, <laughs> how, what do I look like trying to punch a guy who's like 6'7"? Like, what, what does that look like? I've had to jump to punch this guy in the jaw. Like I have to go to the ground. I have to do some UFC shit. I have to do a Kimura or some shit. I don't know. I'm, I'm not punching this guy. I'm not squaring up straight up with, with Cam Newton, dude. Why would you want to fight a guy like that? Big. So what larger. you're telling me is you're scared, bro. So I'm not you're scared. scared. Listen, you're if scared. I gotta fight, listen. <laughs> you're scared of Cam Newton, bro. I got it. All I'm saying is, if Cam Newton pops up Julian's house at his front door, Julian's gonna offer him a glass of water. <laughs> <laughs> All right. He's if like, you don't try me. He tries me. All right. Okay. All right, Julian. So, how many Super Bowl rings you got, fool? Uh, I'm gonna ask you the same question. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Zero. I didn't play in the zero. NFL. <laughs> so we're on the same level. I don't know, man. Oh, don't man. don't mess with these people in public, man. These guys, these Miles Garrett, oh, these Trent Williams. That said, that's probably what started the fight. Yeah. <laughs> probably. Honestly. <laughs> um, all right. Let's talk about some other shit I saw over the weekend. Some sensational, ridiculous news. Uh, Russell Wilson, I think he was on I Am uh, Athlete. He was being interviewed by Brandon Marshall. Uh, and pretty much the conversation that he had was uh, over the, you know, how he like he likes being in Denver. Um uh, he still wants to, you know, he chose Denver. He wants to stay in Denver over the right. next five years. He wants to win two Super Bowls. So JoJo being the resident, uh, you know, I, I spring this JoJo. JoJo's our resident Denver Broncos fan, Russell Wilson fan. Uh, I wanted to get your reaction uh, off that conversation. Like, how do you feel uh, about that interview? And, and what was your reaction when you heard Russell Wilson speak? I mean, in the beginning, right, Denver welcomed him with open arms. I think everyone's just mad about his contract and his production rate. That's why people are pissed off. I think that if he didn't get paid that amount of money and we had not from the first year that he played, that was abysmal. We all know that. Doesn't matter if you get paid five dollars, like that's that's unacceptable that first season. Well we all know what happened. Now granted this last season, I feel like he kind of made up for 
for everything, right? Um, still wasn't playing at his best, but you know, he gave the team opportunities, right? Uh, he was throwing touchdowns, got a receivers in the end zone, had a run game, good play calling, all the above, good confidence at certain points when we turned the season around. We had a five game win streak, big wins. Um, they didn't end the way we wanted to when we lost to the Patriots, but do we have potential? Yes. Um, I think he should give it another go with Sean Payne because I don't think it's fair in a situation he's put in, uh, coming into a new team, right? You got Hackett, first year head coach, gets fired that first year. Then you got Sean Payne coming off the couch, trying to save the day and kind of wants to run the organization, run the team his way. Uh, no confidence in his quarterback. Uh, I don't think it's fair. Um, the situation he's put in to be benched, I think they should run it back at least one more season between him and Sean Payton um, and then see where that goes. But obviously the Broncos are just worried about the money, worried about the contract, want to get rid of him. I just don't see what we're going to do. We're going to start from scratch, where we're going to pick up in the draft. We're going to trade for somebody. I, I don't hear any offers on the table, to be honest, who we're going to place him with. Um, I just hear storylines on where he could land, but I don't hear anything on what the Broncos are going to get in return. Uh, yeah, I think when I first heard this, like, uh, the big thing was like, you know, he's like, oh, in the next five years, I want to win two. I'm like, bro, why don't you say I want to win five? The next five years, I want to win five. Like, usually most guys, that's the, like the generic answer is like, oh, I just want to win one in the next five years. It's like, probably that's more realistic. But I'm like, yo, um, but going back to like, we were talking about the fan base. I've said this before, like, he, like Jojo, you hit on it. Him coming into Denver was like, there's no attachment. There's no motion attachment. That's not the guy, you know, when you draft a guy. Uh, you see him develop and grow, and you be, see him become, you know, MVP of the league. You go to a Super Bowl with him, and you win a Super Bowl. Like, that fan base is mostly attached. Now, when you leave that team, you know, the incoming, the whatever team you're incoming to, like, that's the, you set the expectation, you set the bar this high. Like, yeah. Super Bowl, champion, MVP. And that's kind of what they expect. So, the fact that he came in and was kind of a bust, like, yeah. and I wasn't mad at Denver Broncos. I would be pissed off, too, if I was a fucking Broncos fan. Like, I have no emotional attachment. You're supposed to be this guy. We're paying you all this fucking money. This is the expectations you set, which, you know, you can blame. I think we talked about, you know, the GM, uh, how overpriced the contract was uh, to acquire him. But whatever, that, that's here nor there. But as far as a fan base, like, I would be pissed off as well. So, um, you know. Last year, an improvement, obviously from the first year. But you know, when you're at the bottom, garbage. Right? Anything, anything, anything above yeah. zero is possible. Here, here's, here's the thing, too, right? We we all thought that he was gonna come in and save the day, like Peyton Manning 2.0. Yeah. Right. That's when we envisioned. All right, yeah. yo, we got a star quarterback from another team coming in. Uh, we haven't made the playoffs since you know Peyton Manning retired in 2015. This is it. We got some star power. We're a quarterback away. I've been saying it for the last two years. Yeah. We're a quarterback away from Super Bowl. Right. We got all the pieces. Uh, and they were ready to scrap the entire team by the trade deadline. And we, we decided to keep him. And then, look, we won his five-game, miraculous five-game win streak. I don't know how we made that happen. But, again, like, I really think that price is what, it's what is affecting everyone's yeah. mind right now, right? We're labeling him with so-and-so million dollars right now. And he's just not... You got to produce, you know, right? Yeah, he's not reaching his end of the bargain. You know what I mean? Uh, granted, but there's other factors. Like like I said, man, the coaching, two new coaches in two years. We got a lot going on, a lot of controversy. It, it's it's like what? You're going to scrap the whole thing? You just start from yeah. scratch again? No, so. I'll, I'll go with you with the coaching. But, like, for a veteran like that, like, you know, maybe for a rookie, that, that can be excused. Like, hey, this coaching system. Julian knows about how a coach can fuck up your young quarterback for a year uh, with Urban Meyer. Um, but, you know, for a veteran, I think there's there's more expectations on a veteran coming in, especially with his with the amount of accolades that he's had acquired coming into that. So I was like, OK, I'll give you a year. But like how, how many like how many years are you going to give him? Be like, oh, no, next year is the year we're actually going to. No, I'm not gonna lie. Did, did they think he was Tom Brady coming into Tampa for that first year? Like, oh, we're going to win a Super Bowl right away. Like, I, uh, right. That's different. I think because that team was a Super Bowl team. Like they were they were a quarterback. Tampa was always pretty good. Like they were competitive. So. And you're I mean, talking about of, Tom like, Brady. Yeah. Tom came in. You're talking about, exactly. And you're talking about Tom Brady. Russell Wilson hasn't even came close to what Tom Brady was able to do and yeah. could do. Well, that's <clears> I'm agreeing I mean, to that statement, Julian. That's what I'm saying. I'm yeah. like, where we were acting like he was going to come in and just give us a Super Bowl off rip. Yeah, I thought it was going to be like, plug and play. Yeah. I thought it was going to be plug and play. Not yet. No, it's not, it's not reality. It's not, it wasn't going to happen. 
So, uh, you know, I, I, I just... I, will say, I, I was going to say, like, because I know we kind of talked about this a couple weeks. My thing has always been, like, because I know you talk about the money and stuff, and it's like, and you don't want to restart, but if this is a guy that you feel is not going to take you over the hump and you're paying him all this money when maybe you can make some acquisitions in the offseason that can help support the team to be even better. Like, no matter what, even if you get Russell Wilson in here and say you bring in other pieces, the team's still going to be competitive. I just don't know if Russell Wilson, obviously, I don't think he's worth the money. But secondly, like, is he even enough to really make Denver an actual contender in any sort of way? Especially when you talk about the AFC that is incredibly deep with good quarterback talent. I just don't think he's good enough. Like, he's not going to be good enough to win the division. He's not. He may not even be good enough to make the playoffs. Like, I and it's like if we're talking. I do. Talking, I'm, I'm not totally it. against the idea of him coming back with Sean Payton again and seeing it. But I also, I can see either way because I could also see like maybe you do get rid of him instead of, you know, I don't know. What, I have to look at what the free agency class looks like. But if you do are able to offload him and then you're able to bring in these other pieces that can help support and eventually down the road you can find a quarterback whether it be the draft or whatever like that is an option because i don't necessarily think russell wilson makes this team a super bowl contender overnight like i don't i don't think having him like if you get rid of him i don't think the team's going to be any less competitive i think obviously a little bit but like his numbers weren't in, yes he played better and he played good but it wasn't like anything insane either it was just solid quarterback play like it was just it was all right quarterback play enough to, for them to win games and the talent that they already had on that team so i don't know it's look is he gonna win two super bowls in five years highly doubt it um i don't even know if he's gonna be on the team right. in, within the five years i don't even think he's gonna be on the team in five years listen, I, mean, I would say this you brought up winning a division man listen chiefs run our division we all know that we have young talent we have herbert one of the best quarterbacks in the league who hasn't done shit. john harbaugh chart. come in oh yeah John Harbaugh. Oh, jim mean, harbaugh my bad just saying like you know and we finished above them as well competing with the raiders chiefs own our division so if we don't get any pieces or star talent to beat the chiefs what are we doing this for? And that's yeah. what I, and that's kind of what I'm saying. Why why keep Russell Wilson around, paying him all that money if you don't even think he can get you over that hump? And that's why I, I'm kind of more for the idea of just getting rid of him and offloading all that space because at least you can build. Because like, I I don't think him being on the team is going to make them any more likely to win a Super Bowl. I think regardless, they're going to be fighting for second place in the division regardless if he's on it if he's on this team so it's like why keep him around preventing yourself from being able to maybe bring in other pieces that you can and free up some of that space i i don't know i mean i think like you said if it, if it wasn't for the the money is just such a big factor in it and i know the salary cap just raised up 70 million for everybody but also contracts get pushed they get bigger as they as the longer they stay on the team i don't know what his what he's looking like this year and how much they're going to pay him, but I'm assuming it's probably going to be a lot because usually the end those those second half of the contracts are always the most expensive because they just like to push the money down the road. So, yeah, I mean, my biggest thing I, is like you can say, "Oh, get rid of him, get rid of him." I was like, "Well, what are you going to replace him?" Right? You, we already know Patrick Mahomes is going to be he's inevitable. He's he's always there. It's like, so what? What is your answer to Patrick Mahomes? Is it is, is it going to be uh, Stidham because that's their backup? Like, are you going to go with with Stidham as the backup? Um, I'm looking at the free agency for quarterbacks. Uh, the older fund, obviously, Joe Flacco, Josh Johnson. Kirk Cousins is a big one, uh, free agent. Ryan Tannehill, Tyrod Taylor, Blaine Gabbert. So I was like, okay, get rid of Russell Wilson. But, like, you going to put in Blaine Gabbert for Russell Wilson? Like, would you rather have that over – you know what I mean? So, like, you could say that. I think Kirk is a him. solid argument. I mean, I, like, you is, know what? I don't if, if you can get Kirk half injury. the price that's your – bro, if you get Kirk half the price of Russell Wilson, hold you over until you think you can find, like, someone in the draft – and then you can use the rest of that money to bring in pieces. Because obviously, I know what you're saying, Gabe, where you're talking about, like, oh, who are you going to replace him? Well, 
that money could also be allocated in other positions. Whoever you replace one with is not going to be Patrick Mahomes. So you got to get somebody as close yeah. as you can. I think Russell Wilson is pretty pretty damn good. And uh, and you have to beef up the other team, the the rest of the team. Like if you can make the team even better as a whole, you're more likely to beat a Kansas City and potentially win the division. I mean, look at the look at the Cleveland Browns. Like the Cleveland Browns had a terrible quarterback situation and they still made the playoffs as a fifth seed. Like I think if you can better use that money to help bring in more talent, you can still be competitive. And look, if you want to bring in Kirk Cousins or if you want to bring in um, Ryan Tannehill or something like that, just to hold you over until maybe maybe you do draft some. Maybe they move up. I don't know what the draft looks like. I have to do a deeper dive into who's in there. I know they have the 12th Maybe pick. they want to. Denver Broncos have the 12th pick in the first round. That doesn't sound too bad. I don't know. I mean – I don't but know. Julian, I think there's options to Julian, be had. I, I think you, you can think about it. I don't think it's black and white. No, I agree. Now that we're talking, but I will tell you this: we were one win away from making the playoffs this year and changing our whole narrative on this season. And that's when we lost to the New England Patriots, in which a Browns team that made a playoff run that everyone's giving them credit, we beat. Okay, and they got in because mm-hmm. we lost at the wrong time, but. The entire story. Well, they got in because they had five losses on the season. Just letting you know. That was a good team. It was a good team. And I would say top to bottom. A a good team that the Denver Broncos beat during the regular season. Okay. Denver Broncos beat the Kansas City Chiefs, but the Chiefs won the Super Bowl. It 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 doesn't matter. I mean, at the end of the day, it's what your record is. You are what your record is. It doesn't matter. And we were one win away from making the playoffs. From the team that you just mentioned. But if you're paying a guy that much, you shouldn't be hoping you're one win away. It should be like, no, we're going to make the playoffs. It's just a matter how far we can make it into it. How oh, 100%. The, the goal playoffs. is always playoffs. We're just in this rough drought. And I'm not defending and this. And I think, I I'm think, like, like all right. Back. Everything. Because you'd be what, eighth seed? You would have been eighth seed? Would we I mean, have seventh seed, my bad. Seventh seed. You would have been. I think you either would have been seventh or sixth. And Did I we? think. What you would have played, either the Chiefs or the Bills, like, like Denver's two not winning that, that game. We, two teams that we beat. Yeah, but in playoffs, like at a, a away, in two places that are very hard to play at. Uh, I just don't. Beat uh, both teams, I think, yeah. on the road as well. Just letting you know. Just I'm I just starting out. The playoffs are I'm a just, different just, animal. I'm just, I'm just saying, out, it's I'm just a just different animal. There. Just it Joe out Burrow's been the only person to beat Kansas City at home during the playoffs. He's been the only guy, and he's probably – he's a top three quarterback in the league, and he's been the only guy to do it. I just don't know if Russell Wilson is enough. Well, I know he's not. I just don't – he's just not. And like Gabe was saying earlier, he's like, you bring in a veteran, you expect like a certain presence. You don't expect him to like have to give him a year to the system and all this other – like – you should be able to go in there and do your job and be serviceable. Like you shouldn't have to hinder the team or hope that, I don't know. That's just kind of my thoughts on it. Uh, we'll, we'll see. I guess we'll see how things go. I guess, yeah. I mean, what is the more likely scenario is, I mean, Joe, do you follow it more? Like what is it looking like most likely? I mean, it looks like they're going to cut him. But again, I'm talking with Gabe. Like, we just don't, I haven't heard anything of any options where if we're going to go through the draft or we're going to pick somebody up. I haven't heard anything. Yeah, I don't know about this class, obviously. I think the biggest, what, Caleb, everybody's talking about Caleb Williams. Probably gonna Caleb, the first Caleb Williams, one. yeah. He's not going to fall to 12. I promise you that. <laughs> Nobody's going to yeah. wait on No, yeah. Uh, and I think this is the best Russell Wilson you're going to get. I think this is this is the ceiling. If you're okay with that, I don't see him getting any better. Than what he did in that stretch, that's his peak right now. Wow, it's 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 either I think it's either that or it's going down. I think, and if he can stay that, that's going to be good enough. So like but, guys, guys like Joe Joe Fluco can come in off the couch, have an amazing year. You don't think that Russ can revitalize his career and just have a breakout season? Maybe like a Ryan, like a Ryan Tannehill or like you know any of these. Veteran quarterbacks, a Kirk Cousins comes out of nowhere, you know, has a great season, you know. Who knows? I, I mean, at this point, like, I mean, what's Russell Wilson? What ten years, eleven years now? 
I think the odds are you're going to get what you're going to get. And that's kind of what it is. As history tells us, I mean, guys don't necessarily get better with age. Hey, man, Tom Brady <laughs> had he had three three uh, <laughs> Hall of Fame careers. And that's Everybody why he, Tom he, Brady is the he, greatest quarterback <laughs> to ever <laughs> Um, we'll see, man. I think it's fine. Like, obviously, as we head into the draft, uh, we can talk about it a little bit. I mean, we don't have to talk about it. I just note uh, April 25th through the 27th. Uh, I already noted the Broncos have the 12th pick uh, in Detroit, uh, Michigan. Um, I guess we'll, there's a topic I want to talk about. I do want to get into that more eventually down the road because I, I do want to look into it and get an idea and figure out, like, you know, who's going to work. Draft season is always very interesting, yeah. at least for me, it is. As we get closer, we're going to talk about our teams and what we need. I just thought, you know, that was like happened over the weekend, obviously him on a big podcast like that, making those comments. I, guess, like, oh, I, I don't think we're winning two. I could be hopeful for two. I don't think we're winning man, two. Aim higher. Aim higher. <laughs> think better. Bro, so, I was seeing, I was seeing the things like the over under is 0. 0.5 and then like everybody's like, I'll take the under. <laughs> listen, just, like, I'll take- no, but listen if, if he does get us the two, we'll see who's laughing. At the end nah, of the day, man. Just saying. Be I'm unlimited. Just, you gotta out. be, you gotta be Mr. Unlimited. <laughs> Mr. Unlimited. Okay, when well you say in the next five years, I want to, I only want to win two. That's limited. Okay, Listen, I heard you should be Jackson saying in the next limited. five years, I want to be in the league. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he should be saying. I hope I got a there job. <laughs> yeah, I hope I got a job. I hope I can still be a quarterback in the next five years. <laughs> That's All right, right. Let's, let's move on. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about the draft as we get closer and closer. Oh, um, man. Uh, I just want to talk about Inter Miami because they started up again. Julian, I know I haven't got to talk to you, but you were actually there um, as MLS starts, so you've been to the MLS game. Uh, we can talk about Messi a little bit. Like I seen some news about him, but uh, Julian, talk about uh, your experience with the MLS start. Oh, like season opener? Yeah. So yeah. season opener was Wednesday um, this past weekend. Everybody else in the league played. Um, it's nice for it to be back. I'm I'm excited. I think it's going to be a very exciting season. I mean. It's going to be the first full season with Messi and Busquets and Alba. And now Suarez is on the team. And then a couple other young pieces that you guys might not know, but are, a lot of people are very excited about. Uh, I'm just curious to see how this all rolls out. I mean, we're in a lot of competitions. Uh, every competition you can be in right now, we've qualified for. So I'm curious to see how rotation and everything goes, with how old these guys are and everything. But I think it's going to be really interesting. I think it's going to be a pretty pivotal year. Uh, for the sport in this country um it's the first year of a bunch of big events that are going to come in the, in the united states so yeah I, i'm excited for the season the first game was it was awesome to be back in the stadium feeling that energy hearing the hearing the band hearing seeing the flags everybody jumping it's it's exciting there's nothing nothing like a, a good old latin american uh soccer atmosphere uh, did they finish the expansion on the seats? I know they were trying to expand like the parking lot and the seatage. Did, did they make any additions to the actual stadium itself? Actually, yeah, they did. They added another corner, but it's like ultra premium luxury where they're putting okay. like goddamn like recliner chairs in it. And I'm like, bro, like I can't, I can't, like who wants to recline watching a game? Like I'd like, I don't know, like if I'm watching it and I'm there, like I want to be like this. Like I'm going to be like in the action like I'm, I, I just can't be like this just like chilling just watching the game like I, I can't do that oh I think you're muted Jojo you're muted you're muted or something happened to your mic my bad uh, I said I, I don't think I ever sit back during sporting events I'm always leaning forward paying attention to what's going on yeah I mean if it's like the Marlins game like I, like during the like the dog days of this the middle of the season like I'll I'm just turning it on I'll just kind of relax and watch it because it's just like you know whatever but if it's like an intense match like I can't just be like yeah, I'm gonna chill back here. But they added all kinds. They added like a skybox and like, bro, they're, they're it's, it looks a little makeshift right now. But because yeah. <laughs> you got all these weird corner stands and it looks pink. weird. I mean, obviously, hopefully the next. Hopefully, they said the stadium is gonna be done in Miami in 2025. But I, I doubt it. I think that's gonna that's a huge project. I mean, if it is done, it's gonna be like just the stadium, not all the other shit that's gonna be around it. That's gonna be probably a couple years after, but. We'll see, I guess. But yep. I mean, I drove by like literally two days ago, and I just saw dirt being pushed around. I, <laughs> <laughs> Does it, do you even have the foundation up yet? Like, yeah, I mean, they knocked down that golf course, so it's yeah, all I gone. I haven't been to Miami, so I, I haven't seen the construction. Of, I was wondering about you know the update. I know they're trying to update 
you know the situation at least in Broward for for now. Um, over the weekend, because I, I was kind of following, so I saw that uh, they were traveling before, they're like internationally. They're doing friendly international friendly. Yeah, the preseason world tour. Um, and the there messy was a, world tour. And there wasn't much of a messy world tour because that motherfucker was sitting his ass down <laughs> on the bench. Um, did, yeah, what did you make I, of like? The, oh, what do you make of it. like uh, 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 the reaction to Messi actually not playing? Like, do you do you sympathize with the team? Do you sympathize with the fans? Like, how, how do you feel about it overall? Bro, you know it's a weird thing because I know we talked to, like I, I talked about it with like my friends on the other FC podcast, but I'll talk about it with you guys too. It's like it's it's weird because. <sighs> I get the idea that you want to take, and this is not an uncommon thing that happens with some of the biggest teams in the world, like Real Madrid, Manchester, like uh, Barcelona, all these guys, they do world tours during the preseason. It's just what they do. It's to help get brand recognition and so on and so forth. The only difference is with us is people aren't necessarily there to see the team. People want to see Messi and Suarez they want to see those guys. So it makes it really tough because you have to find a way to play him without playing too much and tiring him out before the season even starts. And then you talk about this long travel. I mean, they went from, I forgot the exact miles out, but it was insane. But they went from El Salvador to Dallas to Saudi Arabia, played two games there, then to Hong Kong, then to Japan, and then back to fort lauderdale so i mean that's a lot and some people are like well it's not a big deal they're flying first class stuff and like look man i've flown to asia that shit's tough it don't matter if you have a bed it has a fucking airplane seat like you have a recliner man it, it's it's not even because the thing too it's not even i mean the travel is one thing just sitting there is just monotonous but it's the time zones are the biggest thing, bro, especially in Asia. Like the time zones of being completely flipped. It's tough, man. It's really hard. And, you know, I think they put a little, I think they pushed them a little too much in the first Saudi Arabia game. And then you can tell in the second one, when they went against Ronaldo's team, they put them in literally like the last minute. <laughs> so <laughs> just to like, just show face. And then he didn't play in Hong Kong. And I get, I get the fans being mad. I get it. It's like, especially that Hong Kong game was super expensive from what people were saying. It was like people were paying like four hundred five hundred dollars to get that game. And then you don't even see him play. He just kind of like walks up and down the side of the field. So I get people being upset. And maybe you, they they should have done a better job of managing his minutes and stuff. And then he goes and he plays a decent amount, I think 30, 40 minutes in Tokyo. But then that Tokyo game was fucking like half filled because people weren't sure if he was actually going to show up and play. So oh, it's it's tough. Okay. Well, so that's it's, like, that's, 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 they don't want to spend all this money. Now it becomes yeah, a trend. Yeah. They decided to save money, stay home. And now you got to you lose some profit. Well, because yeah. And then he just stuff. came out. Yeah, and then he just came out right before the season started doing an apology video to the uh, Hong Kong people that went to the game. And, yeah, I mean, it was great because after that game, like, they were people were vandalizing all the, the messy was, the stands the and the inner Miami. signing thing. autographs and talking to fans on the sidelines? Was, was the mm, no, they, he, he can't do that. He, he can't do that. He, he'd get – They'd never get out the country. He would get swarmed. <laughs> yeah, he would get swarmed. Like, the thing, too, like – People like Messi or like Ronaldo or Neymar, they, like these guys, like they, they can't interact with fans. They can't. It's it's they're they're going to get Too swarmed. Funny. It's going to turn into a stampede. It's gonna it's gonna feel like a riot. Like he, they just can't do yeah. it. And and it's, that's what I want to say about Messi because I don't know JoJo if you've seen on on the internet like JoJo. I'm mean, sorry. I mean Messi in Miami has been pretty like friendly. Like people driven up to him with things he'll throw you know some people throws a jersey to his car he'll sign it and drive off yeah. and so people, he's been you know it's been a little bit scary for him I, I would say for me um uh but he seems really relaxed like he's very friendly like very yeah. like fan forward acclimated in this climate in this culture right it's kind of like yo yeah. like you know he's with the biggest star in the world but you know, we're kind of used to seeing that. You yeah. know what I mean? That's and there cool, were fanatics. Right? Like, when he first came, you know, that first day, there were fanatics, a bunch of Brazilians, a bunch of people yeah. that came to, you know. Oh, and and that's the one thing with that he had to be careful, and that's why he's got, like, this fam his famous bodyguard, which, funny enough, I saw in downtown Fort Lauderdale, I saw his famous bodyguard who's become, like, this yeah. big meme Is on he really media. a Navy SEAL? Is he really a Navy SEAL? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The, the guy's legit. Yeah. Um, And the thing, too, it's like, 
when you're dealing with a Latin American culture, you got to remember, like, he's like Jesus to, yeah. like, people in South America. Yeah. And people will do anything imaginable, yeah. like, to see him and get close to him. Like, the culture around soccer and Messi and just – it's different. Like, people don't necessarily know how to act. They freak – and as somebody who works at the stadium around it, people will take advantage. They do – it. it becomes a real serious security issue. Because, I mean, even if you watch those games in South America, like, it gets violent. It gets crazy. Like, it's you got to be careful. Um, and being in Miami, you have a lot of people that come from places where they're super passionate for it. And they want to see them. And they do all this. And they'll do anything imaginable to go see them. So, it's like you, <laughs> you have to be careful. So, you can't just, like, really just go out there and go say hi to people yeah. and, and whatnot. Because he will get sworn he, and he won't be able like to get I said, out. To his credit, he seems very friendly. He he, you know, yeah, he's a very humble like a person. Kid, yeah, a kid ran on the field and they, they try to tackle him, and he, you know, he like stopped security and like signed his shirt and took a picture with him. So he's been mm. as crazy as people get around him. He's seemed like very professional, very like above board, very mm. like honorable, like how he treats fans. So like, I don't want to shit on him, and be like, oh, Messi, he's a piece of shit, and he don't want to play games. But uh, you know, I understand, like. But Julian, uh, Jojo, I can talk to you about this because this happens in the NBA, right? With with low management, it's like, you know, you buy a ticket. You know, maybe I'm a, a Miami Heat fan, but maybe my favorite player is Giannis, and I never get to see him. The only time I get to see him is when he, you know, his team flies out to Miami to see him, and I go to see him, and he, oh, Giannis didn't even get on the plane. Uh, he's low management. Uh, he's hurt. He he didn't travel with the team, and that shit kind of sucks. So like, Jojo, you can imagine like, as a fan, like. They don't live in Miami. Like people in Hong Kong, people in they don't get it. They don't get a chance to see him every day or or fly fly in like that. So when he goes halfway around the world, um, you know, I just want to ask in general: Do you guys think like is this is this like a misjustice? Is like is this the fact that they have this right? The MLS put on this put on this friendly. Is this like a fuck up from the the league? Is this a fuck up from the team? Why would you tease? tease that he's coming to our country but he's not going to play yeah. or you know what and, I mean? and i feel like it's like a false advertisement as well yeah. because you know the average consumer the average fan they're, they're they don't know the in and outs they hear the name of the team they know the players on the team they're going to see that oh, jojo cut out a little bit yeah you uh, it. Uh, you I, oh there you go. you're back unless you're not Oh, Jojo cut out again. Hey, Jojo, <laughs> hey, uh, you, you think he's cutting in and out? All right, I think I think you're good now. I think you're good now. Go ahead. But just let me just reset. So I'll ask the question again and see if you give yeah, a chance yeah, to internet. So like, like, like I said, like it seems like you know the only time that this these people will get a chance to see him, obviously, uh, it, is if when they travel. They're doing this international friendly. You would hope to see like this is as close as I'm going to get to wh- whoever. It can be it can be an artist. It can be fucking Taylor Swift or whatever. Like this, I will never get to see them in America. This is as close as I'm going to get. And like you said, they're they're spending tons and tons of money. Um, and and, th- and that way, I feel like it's a league thing, right? They're 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 the ones organizing this friendly. Um, but JoJo, can you just speak to like um, how how they handle this overall? Like, do you feel like? It's more messy. It's more on the team, more on the league I mean, itself. Definitely the, the team and the organization. It's like false advertisement in a sense, right? Like average fans from across the world, they, they don't know the in and outs of, you know, playing players, the times traveled. You know, they expect you to be in their city at a certain time, at a certain date with that specific player that they want to see. They don't know about load management. They don't care about any of that. that to them, that's excuses. I paid $300 to see Messi come to you know, my stadium, my field, which he's never been in, right? And you're not going to play him if he's not legitimately injured. Like I, that, they're not going to understand that. They're not They're not going to care about, you know, all the excuses. And which I don't think it's fair. It's like, what is the point of the world tour, though, if you're not going to play your best players? You're just promoting the name on your chest. Like well, that there was I, worries, I too. There was worries, too, that he might have got injured. And that's why he didn't really play the second Saudi Arabia game. And they felt yeah. like they put him on there at that last like two minutes because of obligate deal contract yeah. obligations and stuff. And and that's why I was saying, like the biggest thing Miami faces that these other you know global brands don't is like like what I said, when you when Real Madrid comes to like when Real Madrid came to Miami or when Barcelona would come to, you know, New York or whatever it is, people they don't the, the brand is bigger than the players. So people like Ronaldo didn't even show up for yeah. the Classico here in Miami, but people still felt like they got their money's worth because they got to see Real Madrid. Yeah. Versus like even when Beckham was here in, in like the early uh late two thousands, 
it, it makes it tough because now you have to make sure this player plays. I think it's on the organization, though, because you have to consider the possibilities that he could get hurt. He could get strained. He is 36 at the end of the day. If you're going to do a world tour, you got to be more strategic on where you're going. Like, he shouldn't be doing El Salvador, Dallas, Saudi Arabia, Hong Kong, and Japan. If you want to do an Asia tour, keep it in Asia. Do Hong Kong, Beijing, Tokyo, South Korea. Keep it in that general area, those general time zones. People can, they're not living out of a hotel. Like, you know, you know, set up a camp, not try to circle the entire globe. Yeah. And I think also, they, they have, think that they have on, to take that consideration. People like transparency, right? Like, yo, if he's injured, let let them know ahead of time, right? We kind of... And now... They try to hide things that was a big issue. Media, like, just uncertainty. They don't like to answer questions. At the end of the day, you're only tarnishing your image and what the fans yeah. think. You guys, you guys are being shady. I spent all this money for no reason. If you would have just let us know, hey, I ain't showing up. Yeah. You know, that's it. And like and- Julian said, they have to be more strategic, right? If you're worried about his health, his age, his like you can't promote his name and use his name when you're doing your world tour if you're not gonna utilize yeah. the star. It's like, yeah, we got Messi and you know, whatever team going to Asia. Oh, but you know, it's it's not Messi's not gonna participate in anything. And, and that's why I'm you know, this is why I wanna speak to this too, because we're gonna talk about the NBA next. Um, you know, having these things like I'm fine if you're going to do it international. Uh, I think if you're going to try to grow the sport and actually give some fans something to give to, like make the games matter. Like the fact this is a friendly, you're you're making money off his name. Now, as a team, I can respect it. Like, yo, we signed him to a big contract. We finally got him. We need him for, you know, we signed him to MLS. We need him healthy for the MLS. And, you know, I know uh, one of the big things him coming in was like, he didn't want to play on, on turf. Like on, he has to play on like real grass, certain kind of grass. Do you yeah. speak to that? Yeah. Uh, it's, he didn't necessarily come out and say that. There's a lot of question marks because previous stars who've come to the league, they're very particular and, and they will sit out games that are on turf. Like they're yeah. just not going to do it, which in my opinion, rightfully so. Like I think it's bullshit that turf has even exists in professional sports. I It, it bothers me to my core. But uh, he never came out and said that. He said he's willing to do it. Uh, but I... Real quick to what you said with the load management thing, um, I'll say this is a little different because this is preseason. Like you're you're talking about preseason, and and like I said, you have a lot of competitions coming up. Do you really want to put all your eggs in this basket when yeah. you have actual meaningful games that are on the horizon very quickly in the beginning of the season? So. I don't know. I, I but, think and that's why I want to say like, a lot of money, yeah. but I hurt the brand as a whole. Yeah. I, and that's why I want to say like, why, why is the league holding this? If you know that like, you know, obviously like, you know, obviously you want to have it's like, on the league though. If you, you if you want to have like a preseason or like kind of a warm up, get players used to the season, whatever, that's fine. But if you know that these teams are going to hold their star players because the season's about to start, you don't want to fucking blow his ACL in the preseason. Like why even have these friendlies? Why even market these friendlies? Like, if you're going to do that, I mean, bro. yeah, see, I, I, and that's how I, I feel mean, like, you know, we've talked about the NFL, NFL, you know, going to London. I'm like, that's fine. You know, it's fun. It's good. You know, they went to London and Germany. Uh, that's good and fun. Uh, but those games actually matter because they were in season, you know what I mean? And, you know, they were able to get the, the break the week out after that. So, you know, they, that makes sense to me. Like, if you're going to have this international thing, you're trying to spread the game worldwide. You're trying to spread the MLS game. That's fine. Make it matter. Uh, if you're doing it just as a preseason, like, oh, we're going to tease. Oh, he, Messi's on the team. He's going to come. And then he never shows up. Like, that that feels disappointing. Like you said, Julian, uh, ruins the brand. Like, I, I, I think yeah. from a team perspective, I understand, like, why you want to protect your player, especially a star player like Messi. Like, this Always. is a once-in-a-lifetime chance to have a, a star player like this. And hopefully, maybe in the future, other players come to the MLS. But as far as Miami, I can understand from their perspective. But I think this is, like, a failure on the league to, to me, like, and granted, I know Julian yeah, mentioned like he's only on like what two and a half year contract or something like that. So of course, like they're gonna want him to play as many inter Miami Miami games as possible on the field. Where you don't want to end. Yeah, you got the Apple contract. Yeah, because I yeah, and that's the thing. Apple Apple expects yeah. him to be on Apple TV. Yeah, like and that's the thing. Like he needs like if, to get viewership to get all this stuff. So it's a, it's just a weird tricky situation that's kind of going on right now. But I mean, we'll see how. It go- and the thing with. And this is a little bit deeper discussion. And we don't have to get into it. I was just saying, I just want to briefly mention too. It's like 
it's FIFA and the Confederations constantly adding more tournaments and more games and more this and adding all these things. And it's like they're not actually taking the player into consideration because it's like, oh, we're going to I think the preseason just element of it. But like just adding like the, the whole League's Cup thing and then. You know, even in Europe, they have the same in South America, all these extra games they are putting in all these extra tournaments and then all these extra international windows. It's like the player is going to get fatigued. I mean, I think a top, top, top player who's in the best leagues in the world, they're averaging close to 60, sometimes 70 games if they make it deep in every single tournament. And that's just a lot. That's a lot for soccer. That's a that's a that's a fuck ton. Like that takes away <laughs> quality of play, man. Um, yeah, yeah. Like you're just you're you're overdoing it, um, just trying to feed the fans. But you're trying to present something. But guess what? The presentation is not going to be at 100 percent anymore. Yeah, and and this is I want to transition to the NBA because this is why I was kind of teasing with the NFL and the draft. Like I like this idea of leagues hosting things in places. Uh, especially smaller towns, right? Especially where the weather doesn't matter. Now, obviously, football, the weather's going to matter, especially if if you're outdoor or indoor, right? If you're indoor, it doesn't matter. But if you're outdoor, obviously, sports is going to affect the weather. But if you're trying to promote the league, um, uh, obviously, you want to have, like, a successful event. Transition, talking about the NBA All-Star Weekend, JoJo, um, you know, that they had in Indiana. Uh, It was a big thing. Um, But the the thing about the NBA All-Star Weekend is it's halfway through the season, so we're we're in you know end of January, February, um, where it's winter in, in America. So uh, it seems that uh, now you know news recently happened that they're coming out there, trying to transition to other areas, other cities. And normally they host it. What did they have it before? They had it in Utah, right, Jojo? Last Utah year Utah was last year, yeah. Winter in Utah. Yeah. Uh, they had it in Indiana. They've had it uh, New York. I think that was pretty dope. They've, um, they've done New Orleans multiple times. Yeah. They've done Cleveland not too long ago as well. And I want to get to the discussion of like, because now the NBA, I, I, I'll find the story for you. Um, but they're looking at other cities. Uh, they talked about now Miami, but it happens that during All-Star Weekend is also the Miami Boat Show. It happens the same week. And Oh, uh, uh, yeah. 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 It was a shit ton of traffic last yeah. week. I'll tell you that. So, <laughs> it, was, it was bad. So it's already, you know, already stock. Obviously, the Caseya Center being near, it's not on the beach, but it's near the beach. It's like right there. There's not really a lot of places to park. Well, I mean, downtown. Yeah, yeah downtown. Yeah, into the beach, man. You got the two causeways and a Venetian. So yeah, for our Miami people, no, just pull up Google if you're listening to the yeah. watching this podcast. Um, uh, but there's there's you know there was talk about having it in different places. I know recently I still I think I saw on Twitter they were talking about Phoenix, Arizona, which would be kind of cool. I don't know what the weather's like in February. I would imagine it's cool, but it's better than snow in snowy Indiana. Yeah, it's colder, um, but it's kind of dry. Um, I've been so there. I just kind of want to bring up the subject, like having, you know, I want to talk about the NBA specifically having all-star weekend uh, in February. Like, how do you guys feel about the NBA all-star weekend? Because overall, I think um, uh, the viewership, I think the highest viewed thing from the NBA all-star weekend was the three point shootout with Sabrina Inesco. Yeah, how do you say your name? Yeah. Inusco. I don't, I don't know how to say your last name. And Curry. Yeah. Uh, that was probably the highest rated thing. I think they had five million viewers at one point, which, which was dope, by the way. I don't yeah. know if you guys saw that. Um, but I, I just want to talk about the NBA All Star Weekend in general. Like, how do you guys feel about the event? Because it seemed like, uh, especially the actual All Star Game, which is like supposed to be the highlight of it, where you have All Star players play. Um, people, you know, I think score how many points? It was like two hundred eleven to two hundred. And... Yeah, they broke the record first yeah. time ever going over two hundred. It scored like 400 points uh, in the game. So, JoJo, let, let's just talk about the actual game. Also, let's talk about All-Star Weekend overall, and then I'll, I can get to my diatribe about um, All-Star I mean, Weekend. No. I mean, there's a, there's a lot to take in, a lot to explain. Uh, you know, everyone has their own favorite events, you know, from All-Star. Me, personally, I feel like this year's best event was three-point shooting contest. Uh, it was very competitive. Uh, I think every player shot over, you know, for 20 points. But, I mean, we can start with the skills challenge. I think they got really creative with it this yeah. year. Um, it the was teams. cool, right? They yeah. broke it into teams. Yeah, you have to work together, right? Obstacle course, shooting, dunking, passing, um, and a half court shot at the end. Um, the one thing I did not like uh, for certain players is effort. Yeah, like you know, if you want the fans to care about something, the players have to care first, right? You're on national TV, everyone's watching a game, and you got Anthony Edwards shooting left handed. 
yeah. not not caring about his team winning or anything, right? But the Pacers came out strong. That Pacers team was dope. See, that was entertaining. Like they, I think this new generation, I don't know what it is. Are they scared to get injured? They're there, you know, so they don't get fined, or they're too cool for school. I, I don't know what it is. Um, but effort, not showing effort, I guess, is the new cool thing, right? Like, what does that do for the fans, right? You're there for the fans. Um, but, you know, I think the NBA is really trying, right? They revamp it, right? They they kind of change the rules a little bit every single year, especially with the skills challenge. We haven't seen the same skills challenge, I think, for like two or three consecutive years. Um, Three-point shooting contest, I feel like, again, really competitive, um, great selection of, of stars there, right? Uh, I enjoyed watching it. And then adding in Sabrina versus Curry at the end, which was dope, because yeah. I don't know if you guys remember from last year, Sabrina made – well, she missed the first shot and then made every single shot after that, which started the debate. And like, you know, they yeah. they you know they actually made the competition real, brought it to life, uh, which was dope. And she actually performed really well. I think she scored twenty six, which was Dame's um, championship score when he won the title right there. He yeah. he made twenty six points, um, so that was really cool. That set the tone. That set the bar. I think a lot of people were, were praying on her downfall, expecting her not to perform, but she showed up. She yeah. even shot at the NBA level line. Which was dope to even out the playing field, um, and then Curry, we, we know he's the goat of, yeah. of shooting, so you know he he took that crown. But I think you know that's to set up for what's next in the you know upcoming years, right? For some potential talent collaborations with WNBA, I think that's really neat. Um, dunk contest. Where do I can start with that? Wasn't too impressed. I mean, I I don't know. We it's the same. Year in, year out. I think yeah. we all have dunk contest for fatigue at this point, right? Um, you know, we have all these street ballers. You know, we see these cool dunks online and the internet, and we're expecting to see that in the dunk contest. But we're not even having the best dunkers or the most athletic players in the NBA participate. I mean, they're pulling guys from G League. I mean, <laughs> you know, we would love to see Zion. We would love to see Ja Morant. Obviously, yeah. the long debate of, you know, LeBron not entering the dunk contest, right? Um, we want to see the best talent level participate, right? The most athletic, you know, the most powerful, like the most creative out there. Uh, I don't know what you guys thought about the dunk contest overall, but to me, it was it was all right. Yeah, you know? I, I, I mean, I, I'm gonna agree with like most of the flow. Everybody's saying about talking about effort, Jojo. You were talking about like I don't, yeah, like you said, I don't know if it's a generational thing. Like it seems like it's not that these guys aren't competitive. It's something about the week, yeah. and this is why I want to talk about the big thing of All Star Week happening in February, halfway through the season. Uh, there's something about the All Star game that, like, like this is their vacation, right? Obviously, the top guys, people who are hurt, old man. I, I get it. if LeBron wants to take a, a week off, the man's 55 years old. The man can take a week off, like you know what I mean, because he, he gives us so much during during the regular season. I understand, but it seems like. That once somebody checks off, like, okay, I'm not going to give effort or I'm not going to show up. It seems like all the fault. You know what I mean? You have James Harden who had gotten a fit one All-Star weekend. He he did, he did wasn't a starter, but they wanted to bring him on the team, but he didn't respond, so he never got the All-Star weekend. I think he broke whatever record. Like, he was, like, 11 years in a row or something, uh, All-Star, and then he skipped one year. Um, so there's something about the All-Star weekend that, like, you know, uh, a lot of people are saying, like, uh, a lot of the talking heads were saying, like, this is like a relic of the old time. Because the old time, when you didn't have streaming, you didn't have the NBA app, whatever, game time, uh, you, you could never, the only time you see these players, it's literally you bought a ticket and literally went to go see, you know, uh, Jordan play Alonzo Morning or something. But, or prime um, time. Yeah, it, where it was a rare year. But now with the internet, you can see these players whenever you want. Like, you can buy, yeah. I can buy a, a, a game pass for the entire heat season if I want to and watch all of it. Uh, right now so like i don't have to put in that effort to go see it um but there is something like these guys are competitive but they don't compete in the all-star and i i don't understand why because if you get these guys in the rucker these guys in preseason all the shit talk that that happens you know guys who are hungry fighting for contracts guys who are fighting for spots the com the competition comes out right the dog comes out of them but when it comes to like celebrating you know nba all-star week is supposed to be a celebration of the nba of uh, the talent, whatever we're supposed to be, you know, football's over. Here, here's the, here's the NBA. Now the season started. Um, they don't put forth that kind of, uh, like I said, the only word I can use effort. You used it before, effort. They don't put effort, that bro. that it's level that level of competition, of showmanship, of performance. It's just like kind of blase. They're just kind of blase. The weekend you know happens. I mean, 
people want more incentives, right, for, yeah. for the players. Like, oh, should they get paid more? Should they this? Should they? They're already getting paid millions of dollars, right? For those who made their first All-Star game, that's going to help them get contracts, renegotiate. You're an All-Star, yeah. right? You could potentially make an All-NBA team, which is going to help you in the long run. Money. That's your yeah. money right there. That's your contract. Um, now... I don't want to speak for the players because I'm not a player. I think giving effort is kind of like a double-edged sword, right? So if you actually go compete with the best talent, we want to see the best <laughs> players play against each other in the best game. I think some people can be weeded out. Some people, some players can get exposed. Uh, they can yeah. get some feedback saying, hey, they can't keep up playing, right? Oh, you went 0 for 10 on the field. You got blocked by Giannis. I don't know. Maybe yeah. they just don't want to put in the effort. I don't want to hear about this injury bug, right? We kind of defend it off that like it's a meaningless game. This and that. When was the last time you ever heard of somebody actually getting injured in the All Star game? Kobe Bryant broke his nose. Yeah. Dwayne Wade. Oh, uh, catch an elbow. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Remember, yeah, that's I what Kobe wore the mask. Kobe was so different, and yeah. he he probably still played and did not give a fuck, and then played yeah. in regular season and didn't care. Um, however, I don't like, like I said, like I'm not a player. I don't know. I, I just I think they're scared, like because again, like everyone's streaming in watching that one night and. To, to watch them play the best talent who's going to take on the challenge like who's, who's going to spark it who's going to start it up yeah i will say that i think the idea of it in the middle the middle of the season just makes it's never really made sense to me like i don't understand like how can you determine that someone's an all-star if you're only like 30 40 games in so the the begin the middle of the season makes no sense plus you're in the middle of the season. Like teams got to travel. They have to figure things out. They're strategizing. And it's just to have like that, that, that in there. And I know it's just a part of our culture, our sports cultures that everything is an all-star game, but uh, do people like at this point, do the players care? Do the fans care? Does anybody, are we just holding on to this just because we've done it like this forever? And I just think get rid of the dunk contest. Clearly no one wants to do it. No one wants to do it. No one wants to see it. Get rid of the game. If you want to add different challenges, I think the three point shootout is something where pe- players are willing to do it. You know, um, you can keep that and maybe add some other things, maybe like a game of horse or whatever it is. But and move it to the end of the season. Like the middle of the season just sounds just so like I just feel like it. It just doesn't make sense. One, how do you determine all stars if you're only halfway through the season? Yeah. And this, and then that's not just NBA. I mean, NHL does it, MLB does it. Football is the only one that does it at the end. And it's like, why don't why don't we save this to the end? Why don't we celebrate the the players who had an amazing season all the way through and maybe made made a name for themselves by getting their team into the playoffs instead of just turning it into this popularity contest where like no one really knows anything. Well, I'm just going to vote for the same people that have been there in my entire life. So. I just think the concept right now is just I didn't even think about the point that Gabe made. Like honestly, that's not a this that's actually not a bad shout. Like, yeah, I mean, we can watch whoever we want to watch now. It's not like we're limited to prime time or the big teams or somebody being able to really showcase themselves. I think with the power of the internet and social media and all this, anybody can make a name for themselves. They don't need to be on this all star game anymore. Yeah. And I just think it's just kind of unnecessary at this point now. And if you want to do challenges or do like fun things, put it towards the end of like end of the season. Like I just feel like this mid season thing is just it's just weird. It it doesn't and, make sense. I know I know you say five million viewers, but like I feel like to the NBA, like what is five million to them? Like I feel like that's not that much. Consider like playoff numbers or other things or even like big game matchups. Like I'm sure they get yeah. more like double well, that. Of all the events, that was the highest rated one. Uh, so that was yeah. the point I want to bring out. So what I'm saying, what the point I was going to make is like nobody else was watching the dunk contest. Like the dunk contest was fine in the beginning. I didn't think it was like that. You just said overly impressive. Um, the skills competition was cool. They're trying to make it competitive. Um, obviously, you have like the celebrity game uh, is fun. But you know, you're watched when you watch celebrity game and you're like, who the fuck is that? It's like some TikToker, some YouTuber. <laughs> I don't know who that is. Uh, it's like I'm washed. Um, but. Uh, so- yeah, go ahead, Jojo. There's, there's been this one big idea floating around, kind of like from MLB, right? So winner um, of the All-Star game gets home field advantage in the World Series for that league. Uh, multiple athletes, multiple analysts, they, they've kind of brought it up. Like if you do East versus West, 
uh, the winner's going to have home court advantage in the finals. Do I you think I hate that. That's incentive to make them play better or no, play harder. No, that's oh. it's all you're doing is devaluing the season, and that's what NBA has been doing for the past fucking ten years is devaluing the regular season, and now you're going to put all this value into an All Star game that genuinely doesn't matter. It doesn't like. The, uh, even when MLB first introduced introduced that, it was just moronic, moronic to me. Like it just makes no sense. You're going to reward a team just because they were lucky enough, because this is where their team was based out of, versus a team that maybe would have had 20 games on them. Like no, like we should not be determining who is getting home field advantage based off of this this i this this concept. Like it's just it's so like dumb to me. Like why would we do yeah, that? But- you know, it's this like, concept that you're mentioning, it is a meaningless game, but it's not financially for these players. Yeah. Again, these That's all-star true. selections, get them these contracts. You can still get selected for all-star. Doesn't mean you have to have a game. You can still be a pro bowler. Yeah, you can still be this. You can team, still all offensive. Yeah, all pro, all offense. Yeah, I mean, I said all pro because of football, but like you can, you can still have all these different accolades that you can get doesn't mean you have to have the game the game like you said it doesn't mean any like 200 points like are you serious like that is insane like it's like genuinely curious would you as a fan of a sport just because it seems like every time we talk an all-star or pro bowl or anything just get rid of all of it you're okay with just it not existing as a fan for entertainment to see the best players i genuinely I genuinely believe even the most staunch defenders of it would care less five years after they remove it. I think they can remove it next year. Five years after that, people would not give to. They'll care in the moment because, oh, what a – but I guarantee you, no, it's going to be a flash in the pan. Actually, people are going to forget. like the Olympics or anything, want to see the best players just play together. Like that's an opportunity. That's a once-a-year no. opportunity to have them do that. That's why I'm just asking. As Unless a fan, they're playing as a the Olympics, but, you, but you're you're you never, never going to get it. A chance to see them on the same field or yeah. on the same court together. You're never. But that's. that's we not, almost listen. Why? Who cares? Miami Heat. If it doesn't mean it. Look, forget can, the meaning. I re- forget the meaningful for the league. But the meaning is as everything. A fan, though. As a fan. As a fan, it doesn't. It can. It doesn't matter to me. You don't I care about my t- I care about my team. I don't care about players. So I care about, care about my about team. And you I think I think that's a I think that's a problem with NBA in general. It's all about the player, not so much about the but, team. It's like okay. the only sport that's like that. But outside of that, I don't care about an All Star game. I genuinely well, don't. He, I care about uh, my team and how they perform. I rather watch my team go in the playoffs than an All Star. Like. All star is just a part of our culture, and it's a part of our sports culture. It's what we do, and I think we're holding on to it because it's what we do. Well, I can tell you here. Here's why you should care about the All Star team, right? Because you, you say you care about your team. Guess what? For every hero, you need a good bad guy, right? Every hero needs a good bad guy. If you don't have a villain, you know, then uh, what are you rooting for, right? Because if you're just really good, whatever. Um, so I think you know. The All-Star Weekend is a celebration of the NBA. Not just your team, but everybody, right? Because even if you're a sorry-ass team, maybe I'm whatever. I'm going to say the Kings, even though they're really good now. But the Kings for a long time were really bad, right? But it's like maybe the Kings will never make it to an NBA final. But guess what? We have De'Aaron Fox, and we'll celebrate De'Aaron Fox halfway through the season. He can be an All-Star. He, he's in the shooting competition or whatever the fuck. He's whatever whatever he's doing. Um, you know, it gives these small other teams a chance to celebrate the team. Like, hey, my guy's an All-Star. Like... Maybe, maybe you know, I can't be in the fucking final four, but or in the uh, you get what I'm saying. I can't be in the finals, yeah, but yeah. you know what? I can root for my, I can vote for my guy, I root for my guy, and I can celebrate. Him. Like, hey, I know we're not good enough. My team's not good enough, but at least you, I can celebrate you, Bam Adebayo. I can celebrate you. You can still get the act, Tyler Hero. You know what I mean, I'm not talking about that. I can still support my guy. Hope that he makes it to the Pro Bowl or what, or the All Star game or whatever it is, and he gets in like great. And but guess what? Like, and he, do, and do I really care yeah. what he does in a in a in a game of horse? Like, do and, I genuinely care? Like, I, and, and do people genuinely care? Like, and, and, I get yes, like, like people watch. Yes, yes. But and, and no, here, not really, bro. He said the most viewed game was five million. That's like nothing compared I mean, to that, them. That's just like I, I, I mean, other shit. I know, but that but you we say people watch. People watch because it's on. But like, 
I'm and I, I think you're look. you're speaking from how you feel. That's why you don't have that. But the numbers that. don't lie. The numbers Period. are showing five million. I mean, dude, if that's the peak watch, like genuinely, the peak, like well, no one wants to see this. That's from that's Gabe saying that. I would yeah. advise you just to research yourself and and go look. We're, we're and regardless, I doubt I doubt the numbers back it up. Yeah, I, I mean I the numbers are good. For, also, we get not good. I, it's the numbers are of being of, of being a fan, right? Of All Star Game, there's a lot of what ifs, and you know you can have more than one favorite player. You can you're able to like more than one player outside of yeah. your favorite team. Yeah, I'm not and saying you can't um, playing. Well, that's what I'm saying. Guys move around. You're, guys transition. They get traded. You, said you yeah. personally only care about your team. And the players on your team that you don't care about anyone else. That's what you said. I'm just going off of what you're saying. What I'm saying okay, is, as a yes, fan of we're talking sport, about semantics. I'm yeah, I can enjoy a- watching other people play, but at the end of the day, I'm watching it. If I'm not, I'm going to watch the team that I support. That's the thing yeah. I care the most about. 100%. Like, and that's look, where 90% of our viewership goes to our favorite team. Now that whatever 10%. Can be partial of playoffs and the the All Star game, meaning like yo having LeBron playing the same team as the best shooter alive, Steph Curry, yeah. just for one game. One you won't see it for your team. You won't see it on your team. I'll never you see know, Giannis you, come you, to Miami just, Heat, but guess what? I can see him next to Bam. But they will never take it seriously. It will never be a serious game, and that's the problem that we're running into. Yeah, you know, and I get it. And I'm not, no, and, and, I'm not and that's just the reality. Seriously, we can, I'm saying we're burning back that you kind of just want to – you're okay with dismantling it overall because of effort. But as a fan, whether they give effort or not, fan, I still enjoy the games. You know? Yeah. You, you, you say as a fan of basketball. You have to clarify. As a fan of basketball, you enjoy watching the great players be great. Play together. Right? Yeah. That, that's I just think clarify. it's lost the appeal of what it used to have because I used to love the All-Star game too. And I'm sure a lot of people did. But it's just gotten to a point like, dude, the dunk contest growing up as a kid was like a must watch. Like it was people talked about it the next well, day. That's what I'm saying. We it was like have, a, it was a cultural event because you've been watching it for so many years. No, but what I'm saying, it was a cultural event when when fucking Nate Robinson jumped over Dwight Howard. It was talked about all over the place. I it's just it. what it is. And I think and, time and if you watch this just last dunk contest. Someone dunked over Shaq. Do we care now? No, because we've seen it so many times. times. Yeah, exactly, and that's what I'm saying. The time has passed. I think the time, like, it's no longer that cultural event that it used to be, and I think that's just what it is. It's. I just think that it's, we have, it's losing its appeal. It's a mix between effort in certain areas, but also fatigue. Let me Us ask you this: Would up. you want it midseason? Do you like the? Do you and still that's what like I it midseason, to. or do that's you, do you think it to. should be at the end? Because I believe if you're going to have it which I'm okay with the three-point shootout. If you want to keep the dunk contest, cool. I think it should just be challenges. Clearly, no one wants to play the game. Why are we forcing players to play the game? Like, yeah. they clearly they, they, I mean, they look, don't if care. They, effort, they don't. If they're worried about playing midseason, and, and I feel like if they're going to put more effort at the end of the season, find it. Yeah. I wouldn't mind that change. I don't and agree here, with this. I don't agree with yeah. rid of it. But if you want to try to, like, move it towards the end because – I think it should 100% be – if anything – that's what I think. It should so. be moved. It now, should be moved regardless. And, 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 and we're talking about effort. So here's how they shoot themselves in the foot. The players shoot themselves in the foot. So uh, All Star Weekend is an, uh, like it's like a marquee event, right? Because certain certain you know certain uh, TV stations get right. You got ABC, TNT, maybe ESPN is going to run the Eastern Conference Final, and maybe ABC or is going to run the Western Conference Final, and then TNT gets the actual NBA Finals, and so they they divvy up these events, and All Star Weekend is part of that event. And if, if the players continue to make you know give lack of effort or make it not spectacular event, um, they're just shooting themselves in the foot because that's less money the league gets, and then you know that affects the cap space and whatever, um, uh, the, how the money is divvied up. Uh, to the players who get whatever fifty percent or whatever percentage they have now with the ownership, so they're, they're shooting themselves in the foot by not. This is an NBA event. Uh, Advertiser, TV, TV streamers are paying a lot of money for this event, and if they're going to get a shitty effort, I mean, I, if I'm, if you know, if I'm getting low ratings like we we're talking about, if I'm getting low ratings, Julian, and nobody's watching this shit, why would I pay an exorbitant amount for a weekend that nobody's going to watch? Like, why don't I just? Yeah, then it comes. It gives less incentive. Why don't I just play on Duck Dynasty or some other shit? I'll put on Judge Judy <laughs> and this is, on my TV screen. <laughs> 
And the thing too, this isn't even just an NBA issue. This is like all sport issue because yeah. obviously every every league is trying to figure out a way to make their all stars more appealing. And this is not just a. I think baseball has been doing a really good job. Yeah. I think the home run derby is awesome. I think the home run derby. I mean, even the game is, itself, like you have the top pitchers playing. Yeah. With the top fielders. I also like, think it's, it's a little bit of. That's what I'm saying. With, with the exception of baseball, the actual like, game itself is not exciting but, because the but, pitching is really good. But 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 even well, then, baseball still felt the need that they had to do something, which is like, oh, winner does this. I, you, yeah. You're they still never going to get that hundreds. Of, yeah, they still meet and. I just think, look, if everybody's having an issue with trying to like make these things more popular and all these leagues are trying to change it up and do something different, there's something wrong with the format itself. And maybe it's just a format that people just don't want yeah. anymore in the game. I'm OK with like I think it's cool. to. I think you should celebrate players accolades, the best players in the world. And if you want to have little fun competitions with it as well. But one thing's for damn sure is you should not make the most important game or the most important series in your league dictated by something that truly doesn't matter. Like, uh, because that is re- that is insane I mean, to me. I mean, they're, tr- they're, they're trying because to, I guess, one player, people are suggesting it no, to th- find a, a way to put stakes on it to, to make it meaningful, right? If, if, but, if but the but players have no, have no meaning in it, they're going to have to find a way to make it meaningful, whether it's money, whether okay, it's but if you're, home if you're the Celtics, right, and you make the, the finals, which is looking like they probably will, uh, they make the finals, their home court advantage is determined by players that aren't even on their team? Like, that is insane, Especially in the NBA, where home court matters so much, and honestly, any sport it matters a lot. Yeah. And you're going to put it, your fate in the hands of somebody who's not even on your team. They have no incentive to well, help I think, you. I think they said yeah. the NBA fi- it's just the NBA finals, not not the playoffs itself. But I think they said home advantage for the NBA finals. No, yeah, the finals. Yeah, the most yeah, important yeah. series in your entire league. Well, yeah, like you, the, you better the, tap somebody in the butt. You say, get going, man. You better you better get on some defense. Ball, <laughs> but we all, all right, play for each other. <laughs> but if you're a team where you know for a fact you're not making it to the finals, why do you care that and you're that, gonna that help out you, your other team? That is a point. If as like, well. if if I'm fucking, I don't Doc know. Doc Rivers. I, I can't think of a team. And yeah, you got to put on uh, Chet Holmgren. You the only one out there embarrassing yourself. Point. Yeah. Um. So here, here's what I want to say because here's my hot take. Julian said putting All Star at the end of the weekend. My hot take was put All Star the season. Week. At end of the season, my hot take is put it at the beginning of the season. Here's why. Based that off opened, last year's accolades. You put the All-Star Weekend. Still give them the break, right? Give them a break. Have a halfway through the season. Give them a break, a week off, whatever. Let everybody rest. Keep the break. I'm cool with that. The actual, actually, All-Star, yeah, cool the actual that, yeah. All-Star Weekend, because I, I, I've suggested this for college football, too, about the bowls. I was saying they should have bowls at the beginning of the season that count towards your record in the end. But have NBA All-Star Weekend in the beginning. You have a whole year to celebrate. You know, uh, guys who even got, you know, see how the season ends up, how they went from the beginning to end. You can celebrate them all defense, all pro, whatever. I put it at the beginning because then, uh, you know, the situation where they're talking about um, uh, the weather. Because uh, the NBA put out, you have to have certain things. You have to have a certain amount of capacity in your building. You have to have a certain amount of, like, uh, tra- like transportation. You have to have a, uh, uh, I think one of the criteria was, like, you have to have inter- a certain amount of international flights t- into your city to be eligible to yeah, be a, a may, town yeah. to host whatever it's like but, super bowl or whatever yeah. yeah um but you know having nbr starting at the beginning of the season opens up a whole bunch of things because now you're in the fall now now it's not snowing it's not icy you don't have to worry about transportation about guys uh you know being snowed out or whatever um and more more cities open up um and i like the idea of having it like the way they're doing it is fine like hosting at different cities indiana utah whatever cities that maybe not marquee cities that would never get to host anything i'm fine with them jumping around but make it if you make it in the beginning of the season, the well, weather's a lot easier, a lot travel, people are a lot happier. You know, maybe, you know, people you know, people complain about Utah, but, the drinking, but, they couldn't go out and have fun. Yeah. But at least you can go out in the weather, like you can go out and do stuff. Uh let me ask you besides, this. What's up? The only thing with the beginning of the season is now you're hindering like training camp, preseason, getting ready for the season. You still have still and have being, your training and, camp. And, still have your preseason. But and so then, you're just gonna like break like a week or like, two? No, no. Have your training camp seasons. Have all your preseasons, 
And then a week or two before the actual season starts, have your all-star. And you can see – and then and guess know. what? That, I, don't that sets if, up, I don't know if teams are going to want to do that. That sets up storylines. teams lines. are going to want to have their team right there, especially for starting off the season with like an in-season tournament like right there. Like I think teams are going to want to have their players there, like not break middle eight. I mean maybe you maybe just do in the middle of the offseason. I don't know. Yeah. I mean like – I want to bring it up, up as well because as much shit, about the beginning. as much shit talking as people made for IST, and I was kind of a doubter of IST. It was actually competitive. Like they made it actually interesting basketball. They made it fun, interesting. The players seemed to get into it, even though they weren't fighting for themselves. They, the big time players were like, "Yo, if I can win this, I can get my man on the bottom of the bench, number fifteen on the bench. He can get an extra five hundred thousand, whatever the hell the prize money was." So they had incentives, but they were playing for each other because they were playing for the team. So they they found a way to make the IST interesting and competitive, um, and we'll see how it is going forward next year. Um, but I think uh, if you moved again, going back to the All Star game, moving back to the beginning, um, it'll make it more fun. It makes it makes way more head. Uh, uh, for storylines for the rest of the season as going into the IST it will make more for more fun interesting ways like oh man did you see the dunk contest which call it dunked on whoever makes it more competitive because A the guys already if you do it in the preseason or between preseason and the actual season start guys are already warming up they're already training they're already getting in shape yada yada you give them a little break to, to rest or the rest of the league to rest and then the star players can um, come and show out uh for the beginning of the season, I, I think it makes interesting lines heading into the IST. I, I'm sure you guys like, heard the term mid-season form, right? When someone's yeah. in mid-season form, you're going to get the best out of them, best quality play. So you come back, you know, I was in Cancun for three months. Who knows if I was training or not? You know, you're coming in. I, I'd rather do that at the end of the season. Or something just, you like, but even then, yeah. so what are you going to do year. before before the finals, Julian? You can do all start before the finals. After the finals. I mean, the, b- before I the think, finals. Here, maybe he, maybe you give the maybe you give the champions of the Eastern Western Conference a week off and before he, they start the season, and then you do an all star weekend between yeah. there, just like that. Real quick, it's it's not terrible, but I can already see this happening. That if you're in the finals, you're going to prioritize playing in the playoffs or the finals, and then you know, resting, after. and you're going to sit down your star well, players. No, you no, want them to, yeah. Well, no different than like the NFL. Like if you're in the Super Bowl, you just you're not Don't going play. to. The, the all, so yeah, you're just well, that sucks because now you're fucking with people's money. Because if LeBron's in the finals, I want to see LeBron's all star. No, if LeBron's an all star, I want to see him in the all star. But yeah. you're you're not messing with anybody's money. There's still a, a they get paid. Bowler. There's still an all star. They get bonuses. Gabe, there's, Gabe, there's still an all star by at name. the end of the day. But yeah, and they're still probably going to get the bonuses. They're going to get the accolades still. I mean, like they're still going to get want, the accolades. I wouldn't want my favorite player to sit out. I mean, I know, granted, yes, the priorities to make the finals and all that but you're gonna have players opting out for the playoffs and stuff yeah a bunch of players you know, opting out to not no to not, not before play. the and then not they're gonna bring in before the playoff i'm talking about the final not before the playoff i'm talking about the final and they're gonna bring in fucking the third Steph do that curry brother gonna bring in greg do it after greg the final. curry to fucking play well in then the, do it after All-Star. the final <laughs> I mean, do it after the final. I just think mid-season just does it. I, I'm cool with still having the break because I think leagues should no, have breaks. So have middle. you guys ever sat back and, and asked why they do it mid-season? Why was it created mid-season? This is probably the best format. Probably, yeah. I s- then why doesn't NFL follow I'm just saying. It? But I'm saying it's probably, it probably the best format when the, the league was created format. back in the and, 70s. But now – yeah. Do it mid-season – of the major sports. Yeah, but when did they come up with the idea? Like 60 years ago? Like, I mean, I mean things change. I mean, hockey's timeline is different than baseball's and then basketball. I mean, like, everyone does mid I just, I'm just saying, I think we're I'm, just, just trying. I'm just saying, like, maybe there's a bigger reason why they, maybe that's the best format. Maybe they thought of all this and, like, I think it was. Support. I wouldn't be against the idea that it was. I just yeah. think now times have yeah, changed, changed and clearly players change. don't want. And I think players are making way more money now. Players have brands oh, outside I, of the league. I just think People, it's the new generation. It's this culture that just there's yeah. No, worrying about you know different things, right? Like they get paid more even in NBA. Like we we've been talking, they're getting paid more. We're seeing less. I mean, quality. we talk. So we I talk mean, about like, us, but do the players even care to do it? I don't. Know. I mean, we talk about the fan and stuff, but like, do the players so, genuinely like the care? If, I don't like guys yeah, and like you can, and you can still there. have the accolades. You can still be an all star at the end of the season. I'm saying some like the spotlight. Some actually like yeah. to have the spotlight on the court saying I'm the best player in the league right now. Like 
the media attention, the views. I know you can get the accolade on paper. I know it exists. Hello, it's there. But to actually be a fan of basketball wants yeah, to see like, the best play you know, the best. Be there and you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. And which is why, listen. You'll never get the best place the best, though. That's and, the thing. We're talking why, about hypotheticals, but it's just the reality. No, was, no, the best isn't going to play. And and this is why, you know, heading into the Olympics, uh, we have the team, like, now guys are coming out the best. Like, I think LeBron has said he wanted to play in the Olympics and all these other players, like, cool. they've seen us get our ass whooped and seen us get embarrassed. This is supposed to be an American sport and seen us get our ass whooped and embarrassed. And now they act, now they want to compete for something because now they're, they're competing. You know, they have Including their the own Avengers. incentives, their own personal incentives. Bro, because play, so. even in the Olympics, right, the best talent, for whatever reason, sits out. Like, oh, let the younger guys. Because they want to rest. Listen, it makes sense because after the season ends, if I'm on the fucking Orlando Magic, I haven't been, I, I want to rest. Like, once the season's over, I want to fucking go. I want to be with my wife. I want to go make babies. I want to go to fucking, I want to go get high like James Harden, he was in Paris or something. I don't know. He looked like a fucking alien. He goes, I, like, once the season's over, I want to be done with it, right? Because it's fucking, whatever, 82 long ass games. Let's and, play you know, and if you're not in the, if you're not in the playoffs, I'm saying. And plus, right. even if you're in the playoffs, once the fucking finals is over, you want to rest as possible because we saw what happened in the bubble with the Miami Heat. They only had like three months off or two and a half months off before the preseason started again, so they didn't have it as as mu- the same amount of rest as the rest of the league. So they're you know they're playing on that uh, on a short uh, shorter rest for the next season, which you know. Hurt yeah, I mean, there's so many there's so many different angles you could take. You talk about all of the shorter season or separating the schedule or whatever. I mean, there's so many different elements that are affecting everything, and it's just. It's it, it just results into this weird thing, and then you can look into like youth development, where players are playing way too much at young ages. So then, by the time they're fucking twenty two, they have the knees of a thirty year old, and so now they're having the load management. Because I will say this though, we talk about the new generations of not want to play things. I will say that the new generation are playing way more basketball at younger ages more than they probably should, doing like doing three games in a row in AAU play, like that's just not sustainable. And we, and like, you know, rewarding more individually instead of like as a team, I think that's affected a lot. So I don't know, man, but we'll see with this Olympics. I mean, I don't know. I'm, we'll see how, how serious or how many players actually play. it. I do think the players that do go do take it seriously though. Cause at the end of the day, you are representing your country. And yeah, and and that's that's see you can't you can't that's there's no amount of money they can give you that incentive right because that that's a personal thing right people some people are incentivized by money and that's fine I don't think money is going to help with the effort like they're already getting paid uh, uh you know an exorbitant amount of money I don't think money is ever money was good for the IST but I don't think it's good for the All Star break like these guys want to take a break they're hurt they want to take a week vacation they want to go whatever so go so, with their families let, let's end it off here let's we'll talk about this new Clippers logo. Uh, Gabe, uh, if you want to pull it up, give our thoughts. Show. Just dropped like an hour ago. Yeah, I mean, yo, um, I, I like the fact I haven't seen the logo uh, yet. Let me pull it up. But the Clippers are trying to rebrand; they just become their own in in LA, trying to separate themselves from the from the Lakers. Furthermore, new stadium, new arena. So I mean, this is the, uh, I, I feel like you know if they really want to, you know, push the fans and get more. Oh, here we go. Simplistic. Give me a wizard vibes. DC I think it looks. Vibe. I like the. I like the font. I like the color scheme. You know, I think it's pretty good. I mean, here's the thing with with, with their ownership. Like this guy. Uh, let me put the court too because I have a picture of the court. Look on um, the next thread. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say like, I should show the logo. Yeah, I, I bet you guys didn't know that a clipper or whatever. That's it's a, a boat. boat, right? Yeah, but they weren't in Los Angeles first. Didn't they come from like another? They came from like Connecticut. Or San something? Diego. San Diego. Um, they were the San Diego Clippers. Yeah, I'm I'm fine with it, man. This guy Balmer is, you know, he's spending money to, you know, he spent money to upgrade, you know, the stadium, like the seating and stuff. Uh, this is like in line with with kind of what I expect out of him and the team. Um, I was telling <laughs> Julian earlier, it's like a. Uh, when a beer, they can't change the flavor of beer. They just give you like a new can on the outside. It's like a, you know, <laughs> cosmetic on the outside, right? They gave you the same old shape. Like, oh, look, here's a but can of... But they're not fixing the, the yeah. poor problem. Here's a can of Bud Light from 1978. This is the same the same uh, can. Uh, same formula you yeah. always love. <laughs> but with, uh, you know, Pepsi. This is the new old can. retro. Here's, here's the retro brain. logo. Um, So it's fine. Like, uh, I think it's pretty cool. Uh, I think the, the, the they're having new yeah. arena. their new I, uh, arena. It 
Big Anybody bucks. know how far it is going to be from uh, where the Lakers? I can't imagine it'll be too far. I don't know the specifics of it. I can't imagine uh, it'll be the other side uh, of town. Yeah. I like the jerseys. I think that. Oh, damn. Gabe just. <laughs> well, I wouldn't say I like the jerseys. I think the jerseys are just, it looks like that classic Clipper look that it's always been. They changed up a little bit. The logo, I'm honestly kind of really whatever about. I'm not super high on the logo, but it's not bad. But I do like the jerseys. I do like how they, I I like how they still kind of kept that classic Clippers look. But the logo, I'm kind of like whatever about. The Clippers never really had the best logo, even the one previous. I think they were all right. The one even before that. Um, okay. You feel like this new logo is going to be more like memorable. Like if you were to see it, you can identify like, oh, that's the Clippers. Uh, yeah, because it's just it's too well, new not, to me. I mean, the, the Clippers like, logo like used to just say the Clippers. <laughs> the like, Clippers logo. There, there's got to be a settling in, right? Because the, that happens to be with New Orleans, right? With because I was so used to the New Orleans Hornets, and then yeah, when I they had the Pelican, Pelicans. I was like, this Pelican was kind of weird. But I'm like, nah, now I'm kind of used to it. it. Now. I'm kind of used to the Pelican. Bad. Now. I'm still uh, the, the Pelicans the is the, the Pelicans is still it's that's a dope. Still, I think it's back, dope, man. They no. picked a good bring back logo. The Bob, no. the Bobcats. Bring back the Bobcats. No, the Pelicans is still just like that's just I don't know, like it, the logo, the the bird. No one likes Pelicans, dog. Like, no, <laughs> I guess like I don't know. I'm still not high. I'm still not high on the Pelicans, but or the colors. But um, I mean, this one it didn't look like they deviated too much from what they were. Um, yeah. Especially in the jerseys, like the jerseys look relatively pretty similar from what they've had throughout the 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 decades. But I mean, the logo is kind of I don't know logo. Honestly, the logo reminds me of like a UFL logo. <laughs> really? Uh, I guess I could see it. The Clipper, the actual Clipper one, the one with yeah, like, the court. Yeah, but I, I don't I know. It's not it. terrible, but it's not. Right, I don't Frankie, think it's like incredible out of 10, either. Out of ten. Creativity. Uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go nine. Out of creativity, I'm gonna go nine. I mean, I don't think it's. I don't think it's that creative. I mean, I've seen you. you I've seen so, like yeah, local soccer teams great. have logos. I mean, I've seen local soccer teams have logos that look like that. Like I don't know. Like I don't think it's super creative. It just looks like well, a crest. But Julian just um, I don't think it's super creative. I just don't think it's bad, though. I would probably give it total overall, I don't know, like a six. Wow. That's him. <laughs> I mean, Damn. do you think that's a dope ass fucking logo? Like, do you think that's like, new? Like, that I, don't, cool? I, 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 don't, new. I don't think it's I don't think it's dope at all. What is it? What do you got, JoJo? So, wait, so, who's your top three logos? Who's your top three logos? If you had to pick six and a half, six and a half, seven. If you had to pick. Oh, you said you're right on far. I said six. If you had to pick top, top three logos in the NBA, NBA logos, they, oh, put man. Up, Yo, let me pull up let me pull, a picture. The thing hold is, on. they change so much. They yeah. change so much. Roll, like, hold, on, oh, hold on, hold on, classics. hold on. Straight classics. I already got two. Hold on. Let me let me pull it up. Let me let me grab this picture. Hold on. All right, we're doing all we're right. doing NBA logos. I don't think this is all of them. What the hell? Let, let's do NBA logos. Here we go. What, what you got? What you, which one you? Pick? You got the old school there. All right, number yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, this ain't all of them. Um. Number one, old school Toronto Raptors. That's right up there. I agree. Number two, Vancouver Grizzlies. I was about to say that, bro. I was, I was literally about to say that because I saw a hat, a Vancouver's yeah, yeah. Grizzly hat, like I'm last a- week, and that shit went hard. I, I'm. All right, you got it, Gay. Oh, oh, shit. You made me close that. I thought Damn, you were Gay. going to. Let's, Hold let's on. send it up here. Um, number three, I do really like. The old school Rockets logo as well. Damn, this is an old one. These, these are old, but whatever. Just just roll with it. Whatever. We we know what they look I like. I mean, the old school uh, logos are, are the better logos. No, I want to talk about current. I, current. I think so too. All right, so I'm with JoJo with the Grizzlies. I think the the Vancouver Grizzlies. That shit went hard. I used to like, and I, I used to like the old school Magic one as well. Current logos, <sighs> honestly, man, I do not like a lot of the current logos. I used to love the old Utah Jazz one too, with the purple oh, when they were purple yeah. and great. Like that was clean, and and the Kings. But like, man, new ones. <sighs> I'm gonna go. I don't listen, know. I mean, I'm gonna go. Listen, Magic. I think it's pretty dope. I think it's pretty classic. 
Pretty nice logo. Yeah, I like the magic. <sighs> um, I'm going to go Nuggets. Pretty creative. I like the Nuggets one. It's pretty like when you see that logo. Minnesota you know Timberwolves. You can't confuse that with any other city. Compared to the old one. The old Minnesota Timberwolves used to be sick. I used to like that one. I don't uh, and I'm going to go 76ers. The, I like 76ers. It's pretty clean. The new 76ers? Yeah. Pretty Dude, I, I don't know. Maybe it's, it's just really I'm like a, a – may, maybe, maybe because I was a diehard Allen Iverson fan growing up, but, like, that Sixers logo will always be in my heart. I love that logo, that color scheme and everything. And the one thing that bothers me about modern-day Sixers jerseys is that they say Phila and not Philly. Makes no fucking sense. It seems like a branding opportunity missed. Why don't your jersey say Philly? Why does it say Phila? Like no one calls it Phila. Oh man, I don't know, man. I'll go with the I'll go with the Heat. I think the Heat is clean. I yeah, man. Know. I like the Heat. Clean. I'm yeah. just biased though. I don't want to be biased. I mean, uh, I'm so, so trying not to be biased. But I don't like the new ones, man. I don't. I think the Bulls, even the ones that remain the same, like the Bulls, Suns, like those are all kind of like kind of whatever. Like I don't. I don't know, man. The magic, I guess. I don't know. The Vancouver Grizzlies, though, will always be a goaded logo. That shit went hard. The color scheme, that teal that they used to have, that 90s teal. Man, RIP Vancouver. Bring it back. All right, I think that'll do it for this week. I mean, we we had a long podcast, 1.30. Uh, There's plenty of shit to talk about. Obviously, spring training, we didn't really talk about baseball. The UFL's coming up in the end of uh, March. Dave's favorite favorite team. NBA draft. We got March Madness coming up. March Madness coming up. wants to talk about the UFO. Yo, when we talk about March Madness. San Antonio Brahmas, bro. San Antonio. Next episode, I'm going to tell you what we're covering. Julian's going to name all the basketball teams that he knows, all the players. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to go over deep dive analysis of week one (laughs) UFL. (laughs) My thoughts. (laughs) But that'll, that'll do it for this week. Real Fans Podcast. We appreciate y'all checking us out. I'm Gabe. That's Julian. That's JoJo. We'll be here next week. More sports. Real fans. All the places. Peace. Catch us next week for more All-Star Weekend talk. <laughs>